Well, hello again, everyone. Today we're going to look at new explorations in rhythm and meter. The first eight bars or so here are from Bernstein's Symphony Number no. 1, Jeremiah, the second movement, the profanation movement. Listen to this. We'll listen to a better recording in class, but for copyright purposes, I just did this simple one-line transcription. This is a pretty straight ahead melody in terms of its pitch content. It's A minor, everything is diatonically located within A minor, but metrically it never feels right. I'm going to start clicking it off. I'm going to try to click a regular 6-8 against it because it starts out in 6-8 and you'll hear how quickly we get off the rails here. So let's listen to it again. All right. I kept a pretty good tempo there of a steady 6-8 and it never seemed to line up after that first measure. This is an example of changing meter, sometimes referred to as mixed meter. But what makes it more interesting is, interesting is not just the fact that Bernstein is changing the meter, but some of the meters he's choosing to use. For example, 6-8 is a nice regular compound duple. But then we see 8-8 and 7-8 in a couple of spots. Now 7-8 is an example of what we call asymmetrical meter. That's, that's a good word to look at. Asymmetrical meter is simply a meter that cannot be divided evenly into two or three, into regular beats with a two or three subdivision. Six eight compound duple, that can be divided evenly. Two beats of three subdivisions. Uh, nine eight, three beats of three subdivisions. It's a regular consistent subdivision. Asymmetrical, the subdivision is often unequal. So we have, in the case of 7, 8 here, 2, 2, and 3. 1 and 2 and 3, la, li. 1 and 2 and 3, la, li. And it's not a triplet. The eighth notes are all of equal length. We just have a group of 2, a group of 2, and then a group of 3. Uh, so if you take a look at a lot of 7, 8 pieces, they'll have this either 2, 2, 3, or 3, 2, 2. Occasionally 2, 3, 2, but most of the time it's 2, 2, 3, or 3, 2, 2. Then we have the 8-8 eight, eight here. Now you're thinking, well, 8-8, eight, eight, that looks symmetrical because 8 eighth notes. It doesn't get more regular than that. That's 4-4 four, four with all the note values cut in half. Uh, but the reason Bernstein notated it as 8-8 eight, eight instead of 4-4, four, four, even, which even keeping the eighth note constant he could have done, is look how it's beamed. 2, 3, and 3. In this case, 8-8 eight, eight is not symmetrical. It is asymmetrical because you have a group of two and then two groups of three. It's not a consistent subdivision throughout. Listen to the opening again and this time I'll, I'll click the actual beats as we go along here. That makes a lot more sense. Again, pitch content is not extravagant. It's just an A minor, A harmonic minor scale. Well, we don't even know it's harmonic minor. There are no Fs here to let us know if we're dealing with melodic, harmonic, or natural. It's just simply bits of an A minor collection and doesn't even take up that much space. The interval of a sixth from the lowest note to the highest note. But it's the changing meter and the use of asymmetrical meters that keep us from ever feeling really comfortable with the floor beneath us. Speaking of having the floor beneath us, take a look at the next 10 bars that I've put up here. Let's just listen to those 10 bars. This is an example of what's called an ostinato, which is simply a repeated rhythmic idea. In this case, the pitch pattern is repeated as well, so it's straight Fs all the way across. But an ostinato is just a repeated rhythmic idea. And ostinatos are effective because they, they create a sense of stability 
around which you can do some pretty crazy things compositionally. A lot of minimalist music thrives on ostinato. If you know the music of, say, John Mackey, a band composer of some renown today, well, composer of some renown, he writes for all, all media, he's mostly known for band works. His music uses a lot of ostinato, which you might check out Asphalt Cocktail, which is one of his newer works, as, as an example of a piece that features ostinatos uh, prominently. We'll listen to some other examples in class. But this is an example of ostinato. Now, you notice we're keeping it 6 8 all the way through. La, one, Da, 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 da. La to Lee, la to Lee, la to Lee, la to Lee, and we just keep that going. That's pretty regular. What if we kept that going but changed the meter? And then something interesting happens when we do this. Uh, let's listen to bars 19 through 28 here. Now, it won't sound any different than bars 9 through 18, but if we were to put the beat against it, which I'll demonstrate in a minute, you'll, you'll hear the difference. So here's bars 19 through 28 on the screen. Yeah. Other than a, a ghost note that disappeared here, it sounded like the rhythm was the same throughout. But it was not. I'm going to play it again. I'm going to click the meter against it. And you'll hear what I mean when I say floor shifting. The ostinato doesn't change. It's still that but the meter changes around it. So finding one will not always be the same. Let's listen to it again, but I'll, I'll click along uh, with the home game this time. So let's back that up to... Bar 19, and let's give this a listen. Now, now all of a sudden, we've got something different happening. Let me make that a little clearer. I take the human element out of it. I'm going to put in a C on beats. So put that in the second layer here. Just for the meter. Now listen to it with the beat emphasized without me kind of fumbling all over my desk here. I think you'll find it to be a much different sound. Here we go. even heard it shift a little more than it's notated here around bar 24-25. That's our ears playing a little bit of tricks on us. Um, it's just fascinating how it falls back into place or goes out of sync, in sync, out of sync, in sync. You can do a lot with ostinatos, especially when you have the meters change. All right, next time we're going to look at metric modulation, which is exactly as much fun as it sounds as well as the idea of additive rhythm or building rhythm out of a rhythmic cell and using that to dictate a, kind of like a small, large thing, and other types of notation. So in the meantime, uh, listen to the rhythms around you. They're not always regular, and that's what makes them wonderful. I hope everyone is doing well, and have a great day.